Hi, um, my name is Seamus Heffernan, and today I'll be speaking about street photography and the narrative of urban citizenship, because apparently I believe there was an award for the most pretentious title for a presentation here today. <laughs> uh, the reason, oh, by the way, thank you very much. What was, what'd you say your name was again? Mandy. Uh, could everyone give Mandy a quick round of applause, please? <laughs> The reason that I opened with that was because the number one question I get asked uh, based on my photography and my work is, how do you get strangers to let you take their picture? <laughs> it's pretty easy. Be friendly, be confident, and you always say thank you, and people are generally okay with it. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit, sorry, are we okay? So when we talk about street photography, we're talking about two very distinct um, brands of photography. The first is the classic candid shots where you wait and capture a moment. And the others are where we have more posed street portraits of strangers. Uh, both of these, I think, do a very good job <coughs> excuse me, of reminding us of the immediacy of emotional response from pictures and also the importance of story. Because when people give you their trust to let you know their life, you have to take that very seriously and take their time very seriously. So I'd like to show you a few candid pictures. Uh, this is what we refer to as the decisive moment. Uh, that was a, a term coined by famous French photographer Henri Cartier-Besson. I spent most of my time doing this stuff downtown, and I saw this gentleman waiting outside the shop. I knew something was going to happen. I parked behind him. I waited, I waited, I waited, and this beautiful woman came out, and her eyes lit up. And they're obviously married, they've obviously been together for a long time, and that's real love still in her eyes. It's amazing what you can capture in one two hundredth of a second. <laughs> I lived away for a very long time, and one of the things that I've noticed upon my return here to Newfoundland is that alternative and counterculture lifestyles become much more prevalent. This picture here, I think, captures wonderfully uh, what we can consider to be some preconceived notions. We see a woman, gauged ears, sleeve tattoos, heavily dyed hair, heavily pierced, and yet balanced against the true nature of her love and her ability as a mother. I had a chance to speak to her afterwards, by the way. She was, uh, she was lovely. This young couple here was, um, I believe the polite term would be canoodling at a... Uh, <laughs> at a bus stop uh, downtown, and I managed to slide in, had the camera at the hip, and just as I was ready to press, the girl saw me and turned. This would probably be my favorite example of a decisive moment. Now, quick little addendum. I bumped into this couple since, and uh, they saw me in the street shooting, and they approached me. Uh, she'd actually had a print of the photo done for my website and gave it to her boyfriend as a Valentine's Day present that year. <sighs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, photographing children can be a little tricky. Uh, some people aren't very comfortable with it. However, in this, uh, I just want to put everyone's mind at ease. In this particular context, was no problem at all. The mother saw what I was doing and was given a copy of the photo. Now, this picture, I mean, there's a lot that I like about this picture. The sharpness of the color. Compositionally, I think it's excellent. The fuchsia just pops out at you. But I think that the key element of this picture is the joy and excitement in that child's eyes. Can everybody see that? Okay, that's very, that is a very, very genuinely pleased and delighted child. And the reason that she was so uh, happy and excited is because she was just about to meet this man. <laughs> uh, that's my father, by the way. Uh, my parents are here. Dad, give him a wave. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, my father dresses up as Santa every year. It's my job to uh, ferry him about and uh, bring him to various families who enjoy this experience. Uh, and this year we went to Boring Park and met a number of strangers, including the, uh, the young lady there. Uh, I'm very happy that my parents could come today because uh, I wasn't a particularly uh, gifted or athletic child, so hopefully this makes up for all the school plays and soccer games they never got to watch me do. So. <laughs> this, the next one will be the last of the decisive moment photographs. Shortly after we uh, met the child, my father and I were walking away, and this gentleman approached my dad. 
this may actually be not just my favorite decisive moment photo, but this is probably the best photo I think I've taken this year. And it's all about, it is just about being in the right place at the right time. The look in this man's face, it is as genuine as the look in that child's face. And I asked my father what he said, and apparently this gentleman approached him and he said, oh, you're a good man, Santa, sure you are. In this element, photography reminds us that be you 60 or 6, Santa Claus is still a pretty big draw. <laughs> okay, the next series of pictures are portraits. These are urban portraits of people uh, whom I've approached on the street for a number of reasons, uh, but usually because there's something compelling or striking about their look. And uh, in case you're wondering, by the way, I've probably taken, uh, I went through a lot of pictures to, uh, to whittle these down for you this afternoon. Uh, I've taken probably four to 500 street portraits in the past uh, year and a half. Uh, and in that time, three people have said they did not want to be photographed. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> My routine when I approach somebody to take their picture is very much what you saw earlier. I try to be very friendly, I try to be very open, put the person's mind at ease, always give them a card because it validates the process and you just don't look like a creepy weirdo, which is a very real concern sometimes. Uh, this gentleman was waiting at a bus stop. I walked by, and as you can see, he has a very unique and captivating look. I asked him if I could take his picture. He didn't answer me. He just kept staring at me, and I took that as consent. I took the picture, and I walked away, and he was still staring just like this. <laughs> this is Bridget. Bridget said yes to being photographed, but it was a tough sell. I had to turn up the charm a little bit. By the time I told her that I thought she was beautiful, she started to blush, and I knew that I had the shot then. Bridget was my grandmother's name. There was no way I was leaving that bench without getting that picture. <laughs> this is Nick. I met Nick uh, last summer on Lake Erie. Uh, I was doing some shoots with people down there, and uh, I saw him on the boardwalk. We chatted briefly, and uh, I asked him how his day was going. And he said, oh, I come to Lake Erie all the time. And I said, why is that? And he said, I, uh, I scattered my, my, ash, my wife's ashes here last year. I asked him how he was doing. And he said, I gotta tell you, 80% of the day is pretty good. It's that last 20% that's a real bugger. I didn't catch this gentleman's name. I saw him having a smoke break outside Fiddler's Pub down, uh, downtown. I took the shot and I said, gave him the card. And I told him, hey, check out the, uh, the site next week, you'll be up. He said, I'm going to jail next week, man. I didn't know what to say, so I, I told him I hope they had good Wi-Fi. <laughs> Uh, this is probably the most famous person I've ever photographed. This is Ray Bork. Uh, for those of you uh, who don't know, Ray Bork is a Hall of Fame defenseman, formerly of the Boston Bruins, and a Stanley Cup champion with the Colorado Avalanche. Despite uh, this picture, which actually compositionally didn't work, I just had it here to, uh, to show that on the street you can bump into the most interesting people. Uh, the thing about this picture is, despite Ray's look, he actually was kind of grumpy. He didn't really like being photographed, which was fine because I didn't think he was good a defenseman as Paul Coffey anyway, so here we go. <laughs> Sometimes it just makes it easy to meet pretty girls when you got a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of, this young lady here's name is Joanne. Uh, she knocked on my door last week, and I was home sick. And so there I am watching Battlestar Galactica Marathon. By that I mean I was watching all my Battlestar Galactica DVDs. Uh, she knocks on the door, and she says, Hi, I'm with Jehovah's Witness. I told her I'd take a copy of the Watchtower. She gave me, uh, gave me a second to take her picture. They are the nicest people, by the way. I could never be a Jehovah's Witness. It's exhausting. Uh, my clock's not working here, by the way. Where are we? One minute? Okay. Okay, quickly then. Three things I've learned doing this. People like being photographed. You all pretend you don't, but ultimately you do because it's very validating to you. If a stranger comes up and says they want to take your picture, that stays with you because that means that person is telling you they think you're interesting or compelling. Technology's been democratized. Anybody can spend a couple hundred bucks and get a decent camera. Anybody can do what I do. There's nothing inherently special or unique about this. And the reason that I've been able to do it is simply because I've applied myself to it. When I mean the democratization of technology, it's cheap, it's accessible. There's no barriers now between what we have and what 20 years ago meant for photography. Anybody can do it. And finally, fear can drive creativity. Doing this is actually terrifying sometimes. It's scary going out and trying to meet people. It's scary waiting for that moment to come to capture it. But you have to get over that. And that fear 
makes possible what we've seen today. So what I would want to leave you with very quickly is the best advice I ever got. Clayton Cubitt is a fashion photographer in New York City, and he's one of the main reasons I became a photographer. He has three rules to being a photographer. Be interesting, hang out with interesting people, and go to interesting places. Nothing about cameras. A camera is a box between you and a moment. Go out there. Capture the people in your community. Capture their moments of citizenry. Share your time with them. Be a storyteller and give them that chance to feel part of your creative process. Thank you very much.